What's up gaming heroes? Welcome back to another awesome World of Warcraft video. My name is Erosium and in today's video we're actually going to be in World of Warcraft looking at all of the different best gold making and discussing what is the best gold making out there. It's a good discussion. I really hope that you guys are looking forward to this. And if you do enjoy it, make sure to smash the like button. If you've learned anything new in this video, write in the comments what you learned, because I'd love to really highlight that and go over that more in a future video. Really nice, positive comments that are useful to the community. I'm actually going to be showing in videos in the future just to, to kind of get you guys more involved in the videos themselves. So thank you so much for that. If you do want to support me in any way, shape or form, please check out my Patreon. We're nearly at 50 Patreons, which is crazy. I show all my super gold making secrets on there and uh, show you how I make a ton of gold with my daily gold print. Thanks so much for watching. Let's get into the video. The best gold farm. This is a question that I think anyone who's ever made a gold making video is probably asked every single day. We've all got different opinions, you know, we, we all think our gold farm is the best. But realistically, I'm just going to be honest with you right now. I'm just plain brutal honesty. The best gold farm is just a term that YouTubers use to attract people to watch their videos. There is no gold farm that is considered the best at all. Every gold farm is good within itself and good for different reasons and realistically if you search the best gold farm you're not going to find the answer you want you're going to find a multiple load of different answers and you're going to try different ways of gold farming until one just tickles your pickle and you really like what what you do when you find that gold farm that you really enjoy doing that's going to be your best gold farm for me personally I love playing old World of Warcraft content, like Pandaria here, like doing this tilling. I bloody love doing this. This is one of the, my favorite things. The amount of time invested I, I have to do is very minimal. It's like two minutes of my day per character max. And uh, I just farm, put my, my plants down and I get a load of rewards. Look at that. Already from today, I got 10 black trillium, 6 white, 22 ghost iron ore, 20 gold per ghost iron ore. 23 gold per white trillium ore, 25 gold per black trillium ore, and that's not even smelted yet. So you, you see where I'm coming from, where there is lots of opportunity in old forms of gameplay. Now, I'm not going to claim this is the best gold farm out there, because it's not the best gold farm out there. There's no such thing. This is my best gold farm out there. This is what I enjoy to do the most at the moment in World of Warcraft. There are lots of gold farms, such as crafting, which is something I actually use a lot of, especially with this gold farm, because when you craft, it's so much easier to make huge amounts of gold rather than just selling the raw materials and getting, you know, your basic amount. Now, if you're desperate for gold, selling raw materials is actually a really, really good way of getting gold quickly and easily. But you just have to bear in mind, you're not making as much profit as you could be if you were crafting that those materials into something then selling the, that crafted item. Now, I strongly believe that if you are really into gold making and you want to become successful at gold making, you need to become a master. You need to become a master of one thing in particular and get really good at that one thing. Before you kind of go down the route of you know, doing all these multiple different things, you need to become the absolute master of that one thing that you like to do. For me personally, and I'll be dead honest with you, for me personally, I'm trying to master passive gold making. This is what I'm taking on as my my mastery right now. Uh, I want to be considered the best passive gold maker ever. <laughs> I love the idea that I can take e I love the idea that I can use these fantastic old systems in the game to make me gold as I'm asleep, you know? I love the idea that I'm doing this planting on all my characters and then tonight when I go to bed, you know, and I wake up in the morning, I've made gold. I've not played the game, but I've made gold. That is fantastic to me. That is seriously awesome. And I absolutely adore that idea. Not only that, am I, not only am I getting all these raw materials right now, you can see them get loads of, of the, uh, the trillium and loads of the ghost iron ore, etc. Not only am I doing that, but 
I'm then going to turn all this white trillium ore, black trillium ore, etc, etc, into more crafted materials. And when I turn that into crafted materials, I'm going to take those crafted materials and turn it into crafted transmogs, crafted mounts, etc, etc. When I do that, I'm going to sell it on the auction house and make a huge amount of gold. It's the best way to make gold. It really, really is for me. This is because it's something I like to do and something I'm trying to, to master. Now, if I was doing garrison content, I'd be really just focused on getting all my characters uh, to have the max followers, max level followers. I'd be getting them the best gear for all my followers. I'd be doing everything I could to ensure that I'm getting the best results. And this is something I used to often do is the garrisons. But I stopped doing it so much because I noticed that Blizzard put a nerf out for the leveling of um, of garrisons and it kind of made me feel a bit sour towards the garrisons it made me think blizzard doesn't want us to play in the garrisons because you know they're nerfing the leveling so much and it was such a good way to level as well it's very passive you could get like three bars of experience a day it wasn't broken at all and blizzard just came in and did a blanket huge nerf on it and for me that personally really soured garrisons for me but that being said, garrisons are 100% still worth gold making. Just personally, my own experience of, you know, spending 30 hours making a, a making a guide on how to level with the garrison and then seeing it get nerfed literally like a week later really soured the feeling of wanting to put effort into, you know, making content around the garrison. It does really like bother me that does. Especially when it wasn't even a reported nerf. You know, Blizzard did it very much. Stealth nerfed it. Didn't tell anyone about it. We all had to find out for ourselves. And there's like, you know, tens of thousands of people finding out for themselves that there was a nerf on the garrison. And it made me look a bit stupid, to be honest. So it's really put me off uh, making content for that particular passive gold making. Now, one of the other passive gold making methods I love to do is mount crafting. Now, this is quite hard because my realm is a really busy realm. And there's a lot of people who play on my realm. However, this also means that the harder ways to make gold, like I, i.e. you know, learn difficult to learn mount crafting, means that I can make a lot more gold than other people can. Because I'm willing to go that extra mile to, you know, learn those mounts and then start crafting those mounts. And as long as I can figure out a way to get all the materials in a passive, easy way, then happy days, my friend, I'm going to be making gold. <laughs> So what am I doing to make gold right now? There's a whole ton of things that I'm doing personally to make gold this second. But one of the, the main things I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm really exploring um, mount crafting. I'm really trying my hardest to get my mount crafting to a really healthy spot and learn every single mount that I can possibly learn. Unfortunately, this isn't something you can do overnight. You have to really, uh, you have to really spend the time grinding certain things. For example, the Mecha Mogul MK2, I think it is, um, you have to have BFA Engineering max level, and then you also have to have, have it even higher to get a higher chance of getting it. And then you can only farm it twice a week, once in Heroic and once in Mythic. It's really, really frustrating to get that mount, but it's so worth when you do, because I'll be one of the only people on the actual server. Less than 1% players have that mount craft. So you will be able to dominate that market for selling, which is exactly what I'm after, to be honest. Now past that, I want to have all of the archaeology mounts. I want to have all of the uh, the blacksmithing mounts. I want to have all the engineering mounts. I want to have all mounts possible that I can craft. And therefore, I've just got one simple operation, and that is every single day, make sure I've got one of every single mount posted on the auction house. Now, I'm not fussed. If, you know, I'm only making, say, 10k gold per mount. That's okay for me. That's what I'm after. I'm focusing on the one market uh, in hopes that I can really just keep making gold from that market. I used to be really into transmogs, and I loved transmogs. It was really fun. But what I started to really uh, resent is the time it took to post stuff onto the auction house. Especially when Blizzard came in and they, they added the auction house nerf where you can only post a certain amount of items and then it would throttle your speed and slow you down that really really bothered me because you know I, as a good transmog seller you have to sell between 500 and a thousand transmogs to get you know 
a lot of sales. And that's really frustrating to me. I don't want to sit there all day and post items. And I don't want to have to pay for a second account so I, I can do that. I'd much prefer just to be able to actually play the game instead. So what I'm focused on is getting those high value items on the auction house that I can craft every single day without very much work and then post it onto the auction house. This is what I'm doing personally. Now, if I wasn't doing mounts, I'd be doing crafted transmogs. And I'd be saying, look, guys, I want to get the very highest um, transmogs crafted. I want to make sure I get the, the most difficult recipes crafted. I would be doing all that. It's not something I'm, I'm personally doing right now, but it's maybe something I'll look into in the future. One of my characters, my tailor and enchanter, does have, have pretty much every single recipe. And uh, I do make a lot of gold from that. But... Uh, the majority of stuff i'm really aiming just to get the the mount crafting going because that's where i think uh, a lot of gold is now where do i think you should start if you want to do something similar to myself well if you're some someone similar to myself and you want to get started you know with with mount crafting the best place to really start with mount crafting is i'd say to farm the reputation in pandaria for getting your jewelry crafting mounts this is super easy and it's something I've already covered, uh, but basically you need to go over to the Arbitorium here and start farming the reputation uh, with those daily quests there. Once you've done all your daily quests, you can therefore go over to Windward Isle and actually look for uh, Onyx Eggs. These are black stone eggs and when you collect them, you can actually take them over to the Arbitorium and you can hand those in for 500 reputation per time which is really really good reputation when you think about it now if you do plan on doing that make sure you look on google for the tom tom waypoints for where all the eggs are this will allow you to basically just press a macro and it will automatically mark on your map exactly where all the egg spawns are now these take a while because not often do you actually see all of the eggs but it's a really good way of, of actually finding them. It's something I definitely suggest you do. Now, when you're doing this, I highly suggest you put PvP on. Turn your war mode on when you're farming these eggs. This will mean that there's less players uh, being in competition with you. And you will have a better spawn rate as a result of that. Because there's so limited amount of players farming those, you'll actually find that you'll have a lot higher spawn rate than other people. Now, if you do it with war mode on, you will get competition most definitely. So just be prepared for that and don't complain if you do see a bit of competition. The Panther mounts are really good mounts to go side by side with this Tiller's farm. The reason for that is a lot of the materials required to make the, the Panthers can actually come from the Tiller's farm. Past that, a lot of the materials you get from the Tiller's farm are actually used in a few other mount crafts as well. So it's really good idea to get the tillers farm up and running if you plan on doing any of that mount crafting in the future additionally if you want to become like the master of of pandaria transmog crafting then tillers farm is also really good because the materials you can get from here are directly useful for you another really 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 good way of making gold that i've personally experienced over the years because i've been doing this for years it's another passive gold making method and this is honestly one of my favorite gold making methods it really is it's so much fun and that is daily crafting now what do i mean by daily crafting i'm talking about cooldown crafts i'm talking about the the crafting that you can only do once per day these are really good if you're able to level characters if you enjoy leveling characters and you enjoy doing that so much that you are happy to do it to a bunch of characters, then doing that on a bunch of characters will allow you to get daily cooldowns with certain professions. Every single profession has a daily cooldown. You just have to figure out which it is. And by every single profession, I'm obviously talking about crafting professions before I get anyone that says, blah, 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 mining doesn't have a daily craft. <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, but just keep it in mind guys daily crafting is a crazy crazy good way of making gold that a lot of people just overlook you got to think that if you can only make it once per day and you have to do a bunch of different stuff in order to actually unlock it it's going to be so frustrating for so many people that the people that actually end up doing it have room to make gold Blizzard put these kind of time gates in place just to, to put some people off or to make us, you know, um, more 
willing to, to spend more time on the game. Why have I got two quests here? So Blizzard put all of these, you know, these time gates in our way. And so many people see these time gates and they're like, oh my gosh, I've got to do this, this and this in order to get that daily craft. And so they don't do it. And then someone like myself comes along and they see that daily craft and, and uh, they see all of those, you know, those obstacles Blizzard puts in, in your way to, to stop you. And I'll be like, brilliant, excellent, that's super. Every chance to, uh, to succeed adversity is a chance to make gold. All right, and when I see those those types of of uh, of obstacles, I I kind of really am excited because I know all the amount of people who will probably be discouraged by that. The more that people that are discouraged by a uh, a bit of work, it means the more gold you can make from that. So, for example, leveling a profession all the way to three hundred, and then having to do a quest where you have to buy quite expensive materials to complete the quest. That is a big time gate for a lot of people. A lot of people don't want to do that because it's a lot of work. I'll do it. I'll do it because that means that I will be able to make at least 600 gold per day on that character from just logging in and clicking craft. That is incredible gold. And I'm not going to lie, that is actually one of the daily crafts I do on most of my characters. Now take this Tiller's farm as an example, I've had a bunch of people comment uh, about this farm saying, you know, it's not as efficient as Shadowlands mission tables, making gold, etc, etc, etc. Insert whatever, like, reason they want to create for themselves to not do it. That's fine. Don't You can create reasons for not wanting to do it. That's all good. It is what it is. However, for someone like me, I see this and I'm like, well... I don't have to level characters to level 60 using this farm. I don't have to get this character all the way to level 60 in order to start making gold. Heck, I can do a level 30. I can make I can make a huge amount of gold on my level 30 characters without even having to get them up to level 60. That's crazy. I'm, I'm obviously going to take any chance I get to make a huge amount of gold in a passive way on my characters. Why would I say, oh, let's level 50 characters to level 60, when I can say, let's level 50 characters to, to level 30 <laughs> and make a huge amount of gold that way? It just seems to me like that they're saying, they're looking at the end result of how much gold that you are making. And they're saying, oh, Shadowlands tables, you know, you make a lot more gold from, from these Shadowlands tables. But then they forget that the amount of work that they have to put in to achieve that result is actually a lot higher than it is with something like this. Now, that's not a huge criticism or anything. It's more of just thinking out loud my thoughts when I read these types of comments. It's completely fine for someone to, to say, look, I don't want to do this farm. I, I prefer doing the Shadowland stuff. That's okay. But to compare them is very difficult because they are very different farms. They do very, very different things. They require very different amounts of work and comparing them to, to say that one makes more gold than the other is quite crazy because if you look at the, the the amount of work you have to put in in order just to get oh by the way anyone that buys this um, like the princess system or the pez repellent etc all you have to do is phase in and phase out of the mini game look like this you see that phased out phased in there you see that good little trick when you consider that and on average the average wild player takes around 10 to 12 hours to level a character from 50 to 60. You gotta consider that's the average time it takes for someone to level a character from 50 to 60. This farm alone takes you around one hour to get fully set up worth of gameplay. Now I'm not talking about you spend like one hour hardcore playing, you get it all done. I'm talking you spend 10 minutes a day, six days, and it's done. That that's what I'm talking about. You know, this is super easy farm to set up, and it doesn't take much work at all. When you compare those two, in terms of gold per hour, it's like, wow, how can you even compare them? They're very, very different. Now, what do I do with all those materials once, you know, they've arrived at my smelting character? Well, I open up the mailbox, and this is a one day's worth, pretty much, um, here that I can just smelt up into materials. And you can really see the amount of materials that, you know, we get is quite a huge amount of materials. And I haven't even done all my characters. I've only done, like, seven set on my characters and the the types of of gold income that you can make from just doing this is quite crazy when you really think about the potential 
Now let's just smelt this trillium. Now it says on average, if you buy the materials from the, the auction house itself, um, hold on, let me just make sure that loot appraiser is working the right way. I think I've only got it set to, to green stuff. Common. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, okay. It's only showing that. Okay, then, never mind them. We don't. We won't use that. But it's showing typically if you buy the materials like the black and white trillium ore, and then you smelt it into smelted trillium bars, you're on average going to make 145 gold. Now you got to bear in mind that I'm not buying any of these materials. I'm farming them. So. I'm just getting additional gold on top. So for every single uh, two trillion, so that's 50 gold for there, and another, say, nearly 50 gold. So 100 gold per trillion bar, it, it, it will cost. Yeah, it'll cost around 100 gold per trillion bar. Now, you've got to bear in mind, each of my characters on average is farming about four bars worth per day. So. I'm looking at a, a stupid amount of gold that I can make. Now, these trillion bars get turned into more stuff, and then that gets turned into even more stuff. Now, I'm not going to tell you all my gold-making secrets. I've got all those on my Patreon, if you do want to check out that. Obviously, my Patreon uh, is for the people that support me. And to be honest, we're, we're nearly at 50 Patreons. Uh, you guys have been supporting me like crazy, and it is really, really helping. It's allowing me to have uh, the freedom to be able to make more videos, which is why you guys are getting, you know, Monday to Friday videos. I used to only do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but because you guys have been supporting me so much, I get more time to do that. I'm able to pay for an editor to edit these videos up. Not this one today. I did this one. <laughs> But, you know, the typical videos of Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, those are all edited by an editor. And you guys supporting me are basically allows me to be able to afford to pay that editor, to be able to afford to live, to put food on the table for me and my partner. I hugely appreciate it, guys. I really do. Let's look at the trillium and just see how much gold we just made from uh, from that trillium. All right, 68, 68 times 241, 241 times 68. 16,388. That's pretty good gold, wouldn't you say, guys? And how many of those characters did you have to level to level 60 in order to make that gold? <laughs> oh my gosh, it's just crazy. The difference is insane. That's only Trillium. I'm not even talking, you know, my Ghost Iron Bars at the moment, which is crazy. Ghost Iron Ore is up to 20 gold at the moment. The bars are lower, but I know that's not a realistic price. The realistic price of Ghost Iron Ore in my realm is around 8 gold. I will only ever buy Ghost Iron Ore at about 5 gold to 5 gold 50. I will never buy it above that, but so I know this is a complete BS price. Um, typically, I will always sell bars over uh, over ore, or I use those bars to make more trillium. If you want to do that, you can do. It's quite easy. Uh, you just have to use alchemy to transmute the uh, Ghost Iron Bars into trillium. Additionally, that means you've, you're doubling down on one market, so you've got no di diversification in your markets, which is really important to do. You need to be selling different items. You can't just be selling one item and saying, oh, it's not selling. It doesn't work like that. You need to sell multiple different items. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Today's video was very much just a sit down and have an honest chat about gold making while I was just doing gold making, really. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it and found it kind of enlightening with information. You got to bear in mind that the amount of time I spent today making this gold was really minute and this is something that you guys can do. If you do want to check out, you know, more of my gold making secrets that I don't share on YouTube in case they kind of get overpopulated, please check out my Patreon and support me. I really want to build this Patreon up to be an awesome community just like the YouTube community. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys later. This is Erosium out. Have a lovely, lovely day.